Hi there everyone and welcome once again to ITTV for this mathematics lesson. And I'm Joel, your tutor for this lesson. Alright, so it's time to begin with the next chapter. Alright, so chapter 2 and the title of this chapter is Graphs of Functions 2. Now, let's take a look all right, at the outline for this chapter. There are three parts to this chapter. Firstly, characteristics of different functions. Secondly, solving equations using the graphical method. And thirdly, identifying the regions that satisfy different forms of inequalities. Okay, so that is basically the outline for this chapter. Okay, so from the title again, graphs of functions, there will definitely be a lot of graphs, all right, in this chapter. Drawing graphs, sketching graphs, and just finding values of variables from, all right, different functions. So we are basically going to look at four types of functions in this chapter. Okay, now let us begin by taking a look at this example. Draw the graph of the function y equals 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. Use the scale of 2 centimeters to 1 unit on the x-axis and 2 centimeters to 5 units on the y-axis. Alright, so the question is pretty simple. Draw the graph. Okay, so notice that when you come across all right, drawing graphs, all right, you have to use a graph paper and you have to follow the given scales. Okay, now let's take a look at the, what do we need to do, all right, the steps involved before we draw the graph. Okay, so we are given all right, this function, which is a quadratic function, y equals to 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. Step one, construct the table of values. Okay, what table does it mean? All right, a table, okay, for the set of x values all right so if x all right ranges from negative 3 to 4 all right we have to calculate the corresponding value of y for each value of x for example if x is negative 3 all right by inserting negative 3 as x and calculating we will get y 30 Negative 2 for x gives us a y value of 15, and so on. Alright, after you have already got all those values of x and of y, step 2, based on the given scales, construct the x-axis and the y-axis respectively. Alright, so get all right, the x-axis and y-axis drawn. Step 3, plot the points. Okay, so all those points there, the coordinates, have to be placed in the graph. Step 4, draw the graph. And step 5, label the graph. Alright, so how will this graph look like? Okay, I have already drawn it for you, okay, because it is our first example. Let me just show you how will it look like. Okay, so now we have to draw the graph, alright, of this function. Now let's take a look, alright, so this is the final graph, alright, of what we have seen in the function earlier. So all those steps will lead us to this graph. So a few points to take note is firstly the scales. Okay, so this is the y-axis and the x-axis. So for the y-axis, the scale was 2 cm to 5 units. So make sure it is 2 cm to 5. Okay? Units, remember, using the right scales will be awarded marks. And also for the x-axis, 2 cm represents 1 unit. So as you can see, please follow the scale. Okay, so once you have done that, okay, we have already obtained all the values, right? So they will be plotted right now, all the coordinates. For example, when x is negative 3 just now from the table, y is 30, right? If x is negative 2, y is 15. If x is negative 1, y is 4, and so on. So once you have plotted the points, plot them clearly, you will be able to see the shape, okay, of the graph, okay? And the next step would be to draw the graph. So use all right a pencil okay and just connect all right all the points and make sure you obtain a smooth curve all right because this is the graph all right of a quadratic function we'll be taking a look at it all right later on in this chapter okay and once you have done that you can see okay make sure the graph passes through all the points lastly just label the graph all right so all five steps actually pretty simple and you would get the graph 
Okay, so that's just to give you, all right, a view of what we're going to be looking at, all right, in later on in this chapter, okay? So drawing graphs is very nice, okay? Very fun as well. Okay, but now let's take a look, all right, at the first type of function, all right, in this chapter. Okay, remember, as I told earlier, there are four different functions, okay? So the first function is called the linear function. The word linear comes from the word line. So a linear function is basically a straight line. Okay, so here are some examples of straight lines. Okay, if you look at all right, your everyday situation, okay, you can see this picture right here. You can see, right, the railway. All right, straight lines. All right, so in mathematical form, a straight line is represented by, all right, the equation y equals mx plus c, where m equals the gradient, or also known as the slope. c equals the y-intercept of the line. All right, note that the y-intercept is the point where the graph passes through the y-axis when x is equals to zero. Okay, now let's take a look at this graph. The graph has a positive slope and cuts the y-axis at zero, right? So it means that the straight line actually uh, goes up, all right, from the left to the right. So the equation of this graph is y equals to 2x. And since the y-intercept is zero, all right, we can straight away write the equation as y equals to 2x, where the gradient is two. Now, let's compare it to this graph right here. What is the equation of this graph? As you can see, it is y equals to negative 2x. So look at the shape of this graph first. This graph has a negative gradient because this straight line is sloping downwards from the left to the right. So the gradient is negative and the y-intercept is zero because it actually cuts, all right, and intersects the origin. Okay, so if M, all right, is positive, the graph actually is a straight line, all right, that slopes upwards, okay, from the left to the right and vice versa if the gradient is negative. Okay, now, just a quick question for you all. Based on this graph, what is the value of C? Okay, take a look at this graph. So can you guys tell me what is the value of C? Very simple, okay? So C is the y-intercept, all right? And very clearly from the graph, we can see that the coordinates of the y-intercept of this straight line, all right, is 0, 4. So the y-intercept is 4, and hence C is equals to 4. All right, next example. The following graph has a gradient of 3. Write the equation of the graph. Okay, so this is for you as well. All right, remember that the straight line graph is actually not something new, all right, for all of us, right? You have actually learned it before, okay? So now you're just applying it, all right? Don't forget, all right, the form. Y equals to mx plus c. So if this graph has a gradient of 3, all right, what is, all right, the equation of this graph? Okay, so take a look at this graph. The graph, all right, has an equation given there. Y equals to mx plus c. All right, and the y-intercept is negative 2, right? So what is the equation? One look, you can tell me that it is y equals to 3x minus 2. Okay, so the straight line graph is pretty straightforward. All you have to do is recognize the gradient and the y-intercept, okay, and also the type of graph, okay, whether the gradient is positive or negative. Now, let's take a look at this example, all right, for you guys to try as well. This is an exam type question. The graph of y equals to ax to the power of n plus b is shown in the diagram. Okay, take a close look at this graph. The values of a, b, and n are a, a equals to 2, 
b equals to 5, n equals to 1. b, a equals negative 1. b equals to negative 5, n equals to 2. c, a equals to 1, b equals to 5, n equals to 1. d, a equals to 1, b equals to 5, n equals to 2. All right, so I'll just give you guys all right, a few moments right now to find out the answer for this question. All right, let's take a look at the solution. Okay, so we have to find the values of three unknowns, A, B, and N. Okay, now let's start with A. A represents the slope of the graph. So remember, okay, if you can take a close look, all right, you would know, all right, that this is definitely a linear function. All right, so A is actually M, okay, but it is not direct because they do not want to tell you Y equals to MX plus C directly. Okay, so the slope, all right, can be found by taking negative, all right, of the Y intercept divided by the x-intercept. So, it will be equals to negative 5 divided by negative 5, all right, which is equals to 1. Okay, so we have got one answer already. Now, what about B? B represents the y-intercept of the graph. Okay, this is pretty straightforward. Look at the graph for your answer and you can see that the y-intercept is 5, right? Not the x-intercept. Okay, the y-intercept. So we have got two already. And now, all right, to get our complete answer, since this is a linear graph, n, which is the power of x, must be 1. Okay, so what is your answer? It should be c. a equals to 1, b equals to 5, and n equals to 1. All right, now let's take a look at one more part, okay, in this lesson. All right, still involving the linear function, which is sketching a linear graph of y equals mx plus c. Okay, just two graphs. Sketch the graph of y equals 2x minus 10 and y equals negative 3x plus 4. All right, now let's take a look at how do we sketch a graph. Now, how do we sketch the graph of this linear function? Let's take a look at this equation. All right, it is y equals to 2x minus 10. All right, so it is clearly, all right, in the linear form, right? If we compare it to y equals to mx plus c. Now, examine it carefully every time you have a linear equation. All right, so from this equation, we know that the gradient of this straight line will be 2 and it's y intercept negative 10. All right, so now we are going to sketch out this straight line, okay? So what is the difference between a sketch, all right, and drawing a graph, all right? In a sketch, we can actually sketch it right here, okay? Which means we don't have to use a graph paper, but what is important is, all right, all the vital points must be shown, all right? For example, all right, the y-intercept, the x-intercept, all right, and also, okay, the shape of the graph, okay? So now, let's look carefully, and as you can see, the y-intercept is negative 10, so that is very clear. So now, let us place, all right, negative 10 on the y-axis, okay? So let me just put it right here, slightly below. All right, so we know that this straight line will definitely pass through, all right, negative 10 on the y-axis because that is the y-intercept. Now, in order to complete the straight line, we need another point, all right? And one of the easiest points, all right, to get is actually on the x-axis, which means the x-intercept of this straight line. So now, we need to do some simple calculation for that. Now, let us find the x-intercept for this straight line, okay? But always remember, the x-intercept is on the x-axis. So on the x-axis, one very important thing to remember is that y is always zero. Now, substitute this value of y equals to 0 in the equation and we get 0 equals to 2x minus 10. Alright, so what do we have right here is 2x equals to 10 and x equals to 5. 
So what is this x equals to 5? It is actually the x-intercept of this straight line, okay? So now, where is x equals to 5? All right, so let's put it right here, okay? So that is x equals to 5. Now, since we have the x-intercept and y-intercept, we can complete, all right? And we can already draw this straight line. Okay, so there we have, this is, all right, the sketch for this linear function. Okay, now let's take a look at another graph. Okay, this time, all right, the graph has a negative gradient. Okay, so always look at the equation of the graph. Y equals to negative 3x plus 4. Okay, so it is a very simple function, all right? So I want you guys to now take a look, all right, and tell me what is the gradient and the y-intercept of this linear function okay so one look and you can compare it all right with the linear form of y equals to mx plus c that the gradient is negative 3 and the y intercept is 4 all right so these are very important details on the graph it tells you okay the shape of the graph okay whether it is upwards or downwards from the left to the right all right so now how can we actually draw and sketch okay this straight line all right, by simply using a few key points, and one of them is already here. What is for? It is the y-intercept, okay? So y-intercept for, okay, means I will put it here. All right, y-intercept, okay? Origin is right here, okay? So it is a sketch, all right? And as always, the next point that we will use will be the x-intercept of this straight line, okay? And we need to actually all right, do some simple calculation right there. So now, how do we find it? Same thing, x-intercept is on the x-axis. So on the x-axis, what is zero? Y, all right? So every coordinate of y on the x-axis is zero, all right? So substitute y equals to zero in the equation. and get the value of x. So the value of x is 4 over 3. All right, and 4 over 3, all right, is actually the x-intercept, all right, of this straight line, okay? So 4 over 3, okay? Roughly 1 point something, right? So where is it? Okay, not too far out, all right? So your sketch, all right, although it is just like that, okay? you have to make it as accurate as possible, all right? So 4 over 3 will probably, all right, let's put it right here. Okay, so we can see, all right, the straight line will be this way because it has a negative gradient, all right? So now just connect these two points, okay? Remember the intercepts are one of the easiest points to actually get your, all right, graph going, okay? And just draw and connect them with a ruler. So there we go, guys. We have here the graph of y equals to negative 3x plus 4. Okay, now, so now let's take a look at what we have learned in this lesson, okay? So basically, we have learned three things. Firstly, we have learned how to recognize different forms of linear functions and their respective equations. Secondly, we have learned how to determine the y-intercept of a graph of the linear function. And lastly, we have learned how to sketch a linear graph. All right, guys, so that's all we have for you right here in this lesson. All right, we will be looking at the other functions, all right, in this chapter, all right, in the next lesson. So until then, goodbye.